Thomas Wayne again. Maryville themselves banned it in game two. It would just be a great takeaway from game three. Oh. Prototypes also played Ash twice. Uh, there's also been that Orn banned twice, or Orn played twice. So mm -hmm. those are some things you could look to take away. Those seem to be repeated uh, measures of success for Maryville. It's actually going to be the Talia they end up taking away. They but thought those walls the were problems. There goes the Swain being banned out. So two mid laners being banned on the side of CC. Uh, the Camille and the Olaf coming out from the Maryville, looking for a trundle jungle with Olaf banned from what it seems. That's what they did last time. No, just bad. Also, right, I'm, I'm so interested to see what this last ban from CC will be. Is it the Ash? Is it something else? Because it is the it Ash. Is, it is the Ash. Yeah. But All now right, so. Tom Kench up, and now Kaiza is still up. Vayne is still up. Now we, yeah. Caitlyn's up. Can we right, get the there's so many AD specials? carries that you can pick. There's so many AD carries you can pick from here. Zaya Rakan is up as well if you wanted to try and go for that. Since there's so many AD carries still up, it might be better to go for a, a priority jungler, and that is, is what the they're trundle. going to do with the trundle. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, try and true bans here, but the Camille is something interesting. Even though Misty played it last game and lost, they will be taking that away from him in the first round of the draft. I think it was just an annoyance of having to do a split push, and Misty, as you said, did a good job of denying Maryville from going for the split push abilities. And as you dropped earlier, the Jin is picked up by Evan RL. Now, Rageblade Jin is still disabled, but Jin overall is still a very powerful pick with his build path. And the Nocturne being hovered, I didn't like the Nocturne pick. I didn't think it provided much, and it is locked in. Oof. That, that is big oof. I really being hovered, that's a meme. I really is banned, but there it is. Oh, that Kaiza, the prototype it's Kaiza. It's the prototype what Kaiza I was this time. Hyping up for. Oh, this is going to be really fun. Especially, can Emmy West get back onto the Tom Kench? Imagine prototype diving in backline, and then West just ulting in to save him. What a combination right there. CC adapted with their bans, but their picks so far are looking a lot like game two. And if they aren't able to get off the ground like they were in that last game, then it will very quickly be a lot of trouble. And now, Mary Vogus is Lulu once again. So even though it was banned in the last game, it's going to be back this time. Well, I do like the adaptation of picking Galio for the mid lane. More it's a lot like the Karma, karma. though. It, it is, but more global presence. And the ability to apply the taunt, have your global yes. for damage reduction. And I'm okay with the Jin. It's still the Nocturne pick that's really getting to me. Is that a counter to Trundle and solo queue? And, or well, at least higher rank solo queue that I haven't been experiencing, obviously. It, it's hard to tell, but last game it did not show any strength. Where's the Tom Kench? Uh, currently the You're Tom playing Kench. Nocturne again. <laughs> it, uh, well, I, I really think this should have been banned, but I fully... Well, they could pick Tom Kench right here, I suppose. That would also be something that they could do. But if they give it over to Maryville again, Tom Kench really well, no, shut Mary, down Mary a lot of what Tom they Kench. wanted to do. Unless the Lulu goes mid. The Lulu was picked up from Maryville, so it will be a Kaiza Lulu bot lane. Oh, you're right. There is a Lulu. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm trolling I'm a little, little bit. Hey, hey, the Lulu could go mid. For some reason, I thought the Lulu was a Karma, even though... I <laughs> Uh, so oh, that... Or getting picked up from Misty Stumpy, taking away from Saskio for the first time okay. in the series. But now that opens up, will Saskio play? Up, oh, nope. I was gonna say, will he play a high damage, high DPS top? Goes back to the Cho'Gath, which is a lot of tankiness once right. again. Yeah. So this well, is quite ref reminiscent of Maryville's game one composition, which was also a pretty uh, nice win. Uh, both of these games, they kind of rolled off to a nice start and had an advantage and then took a very methodical approach to ending the game in that second game. It looked a lot better than game one where they kind of fumbled great. around the Baron for a very long time. But that game two, they really looked like they knew what they were doing closing that one out eventually. Is that Orin the Blitz? is now being taken away from That's Saskio. That's the Blitzcrank. It's the Blitzcrank. That's Deep locked in. Oh my. Blitz. Okay, okay. This this draft, I thought it was going to go south for Columbia College, but now they've just brought so much spice in it. We have, uh, I think Is spice good. <laughs> I, Hey, I don't know. I'm not a spicy person. I prefer sweet, but we'll have to see, but let's go look over at Maryville right now. Saskio back on a tank cat ears back on a trundle Kaiza and Anivia, two pretty good scaling champions. Maryville taking the scaling route this game. Uh, what, what's the CC comp? It's kind of a dive. Now you can dive in his Nocturne and have Galio old. That's true. And Once again, they don't have a ton of damage. If, if Jin and Nocturne fall behind, who is going to kill the other team, especially when you have to break through a Cho'Gath and a Trundle and Lulu shields and wild growths coming out everywhere, and Nivia has her egg? It's That's just going right. to be so hard to actually kill them if you fall behind. So Columbia, once again, picks 
a composition that puts the pressure on them to perform in the early game. And when you're already down 2-0 in a series where you were confident coming in and you're just getting wrecked, I don't know if this is the right strategy to bring you back in the game. I don't know if it is. And one thing I do like about Mirror Team Cup, similar to last game, is the zoning potential. You have a Nivea wall, Trundle Pillar, Cho'Gath uh, Rupture is so annoying to deal with. That gives prototypes so much ability to work around different types of terrain as that Kai'Sa. And all you have to deal with really is the Galio Instant Taunt and Orn knocking you up. Other than that, prototypes free to run anywhere he wants to across the rift. Right. He's not stuck on Ashidi this time either. He's mm-hmm. he's going to be able to carry. Whether that's a good thing or not, we will have to see because he definitely has the potential to dash in and kill himself, blow up, and uh, just <laughs> implode the team's hopes and dreams of winning that particular mm-hmm. team fight. But we'll if it goes it. well, he will definitely be capable of popping off and dealing a lot of damage, especially if he can find his way onto this squishy Evan RL. That's right. Uh, but I... The blitz crank pick, that I think that's the giant curveball that we see right here out of the 10 picks. If he does land a hook on the Kaiza or the Lulu, there is strong potential to just blow someone up, especially if you sit on Jin's fourth shot right there. You're looking at blitz crank pull in, blitz crank can E up, and then you have Jin W, and that's already a good chunk of damage coming down, and they have Jin's Q to apply more damage. So with the fourth shot doing more damage, the less health your opponent has, that could be a potential for a huge wombo combo. And it will be in the hands of Evan RL to hard carry this game because you would have to figure once the Nocturne dives in, all he has is Galio ult. There's really no coming back. Right. And we have to remember Rageblade is banned in CLOL on Jin at the moment, so he will not be able to opt into that build. He will have to go for either a more lethality or crit-based build, depending on what he wants to do. And I would say you probably need as much damage as possible when you have the Galio and then Orn and Blitz on your team, you need to really step up and be the main damage dealer for your team. So I'm surprised they didn't go for something like a more traditional scaling carry, like the Caitlyn or the Zaya, something like that. Um, nonetheless, all eyes will have to be on this bot lane once again, because we do have the Trundle and Nocturne like we did in that last game, going to be looking to yep. make plays uh, once they get their first clear done. And we saw what West could do on this Lulu. They actually won that 2v2 in the first game, getting a kill Onto Dean, I believe it was, who didn't have Flash on that Thresh. It was, first blood. Yeah, so if Dean can make enough plays and Evan can follow up well enough, they might be able to just blow up a Lulu or Kaisa if they can hook them in. If not, though, they're just going to get poked out. The Lulu will be able to do her thing, and a bot lane lead could quickly transition into problems. They're going to have to play smartly around the, the Galio heroic entrance as well as the Paranoia uh, to execute strongly in this bottom lane. Well, we even saw last game. In game one, there was a lot of bot focus but in game two both adcs both supports were zero 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 times there wasn't much influence in the bottom lane but we saw just how effective the trundle was the saskio on a tank even though it was orn and now it's chogath he was still extremely effective being able to shut down stumpy and now the tank versus tank matchup similar to what game one was you would have to figure okay marvel's back in the swing of things there's a lot of good that's about to come from this team comp style yeah, I really like Maryville, or what Maryville has been doing with their uh, drafts this series. It feels like they come in with a plan, it works, they stick with it, they pick the elements that were successful, they stick with it. They didn't even have to adapt that much in the second game because the bans weren't really that relevant to them. Mm-hmm. And then they they get Talia taken away from them, they replace it with another champion that can put up a wall. Cat God, CKG, big fan um of those wall champions gonna be looking to make some plays once again in this mid lane is it easy to damage galio <laughs> as anivia uh, i'm not i'm not too sure but you can at least wave clear and that well, can stall the game for a very long time for you to get to that stage where you can fight front to back team fights speaking of front to back team fights and talking about the game we are in game right now and finally a different level one coming out five men roaming down to the bot lane they are in the first lane bush down in bot lane as a five-man. Dean looking to walk down. Zach making his way. Ooh, misses the hook onto West. Nobody went into the bush to see if anyone was in there. The hook was completely blind. And with that, no one was able to get caught. Good part on West playing so far back, expecting cheese just in case. And now uh, we do see a deep ward getting in from Saskio, warding up the red buff. River is warded up by uh, the Anivia dropping a ward and overall i think with that missed hook oh it looks like mariville's looking to do something here yeah, people interesting coming in. counter right here. probably just to get vision on the buff to really know where bookzak is starting i do like that they were smart enough to recognize uh, that dean was playing blitzcrank and they mm-hmm. know that he's famous for shenanigans level one playing around that making sure to not give up an advantage early 
when you've been confident to just play the traditional League of Legends gameplay, uh, find some early game advantages, snowball them into good front to back team fighting and macro game. And we haven't really seen enough of that from Columbia when they're touted as one of the best. That's right. Uh, so looking across the board at uh, Keystones, we do have uh, the Unseal Spellbook on the Anivia. We will see switches between Cleanse and Teleport most likely, Double Teleport being showing some worth and value in this series. Map pressure is very important. We know to Maryville, who did a really good job controlling minion waves and uh, pressure across the map. Just obviously uh, getting stumped by uh, Misty Stumpy, I guess you could say, on his Camille. Uh, but now with double TP, I feel like you can match anything, any shenanigans like that a lot easier, even though it's two tank matchups. Yeah, a little bit of a slow early game. Junglers are just finishing up their first clear as they oh, end on the opposite hit. sides, which will provide an opportunity for Cat Ears to, I don't know, I don't know if he can do too much in this shoving top lane, but maybe just try and get deep vision in the other side of the jungle. On the other hand, Buxack also has a pushing bot lane, so there's not much for him to do. Maybe get some vision around that dragon, but it looks like it's going to be pretty Ooh. uneventful early game. Especially with a Cloud Drake being the first Again. game available. But, oh, look at Bugzak making it's done. It's done. Julian with a double taunt. It only hits a single taunt. We doesn't have to burn flash. Does he have burn flash? No, definitely good. And now the Nocturne's coming in just for safety reasons. Galio does have TP. Can TP back in the lane. Uh, Burning the TP this early, though, is not really what you want to do, especially when Anivia has spellbooking to easily switch out that cleanse for TP. Yeah, and especially when you're dealing with a tier mid laner as you are with the Anivia, easy to go back at about seven minutes, get your one shard to switch out from cleanse to teleport, grab that tier because it's only 750 gold and then TP back in the lane and now you're just spamming. Especially with Anivia, the amount of spam you have. As we see right now, Anivia looking to go back, cancels the recall. Uh... Probably needs to farm a little bit more. Only at 515 gold. Tier is 750. Right. And Anivia also has the minion dematerializer. And that's going to be pretty important because shoving out the wave when you choose to before you have level 6 is nice. Because once Galio has that mid lane wave control where he can just use those winds of war and shove them out, it's a really easy uh, roam for him to go get that vision control in the river and use that heroic entrance in the bot lane if they need to. Um, also, if Dean hits a hook, inter interesting interaction is he will bring them directly into him. <laughs> so if Galio ults on top of that, they're going to be stuck in there for quite a long time with no help from their own team. Yeah, I really like the interactions you can have with Galio. If Dean lands a hook, Galio can ult the Blitz Crank and make sure that whoever Dean hooks does not escape. Or if Nocturne looks to ult into the back lane, you now have a Galio ult come in and I guess keep the Nocturne alive longer. And you also have Ornold on top of that to keep chaining CC. But looks like we have something in mid lane. Nocturne's wrapping. Taunt landed onto. Oh, with the flash over by Bugs. That game. Fear onto the Trundle. Trundle flashing away. Great pillar. Great stun. Great by use of the terrain abilities from it's Maryville right there. You saw the wall. Zach had the flash over the wall. And then the pillar as he was hiding away uh, to stop that from the Galio and Nocturne from killing him. So overall, great job to get out of that gank. They did have to burn the flash, but it was traded on the Nocturne. Yeah, it was a one-for-one one flash, and I do think right now, as the Anivia, you are sitting on that 750 gold, at least. You go back, get your tier, you can TP back in the lane. Good dodge on West on that uh, hook right there, and great shield, too, negating all the damage off the Gen Q. Uh, if we do see, Evan RL is starting uh, Doran's Ring, which is pretty typical amongst most Jins, and especially in this patch, just to keep up mana sustain, but that will negate in any early game damage that Jin provides has to really rely on that fourth shot, getting whoever it is low first. As you see right there, the fourth shot not doing much to prototype. Not much happening. Um, still waiting on first backs for every other lane besides the mid. Uh, we do see Anivia was able to pick up her tier, so that's going to be stacking a little bit earlier. And Julia, yep. Julian's taking a base now when he doesn't have TP. So he is actually calling Bucks to catch this wave as it gets shoved in. So, well, I, I was just looking at items and saw there's a catalyst for top lane and Stumpy, and I looked at his teleport. It's not blown. I forgot. Orn can just build items in the lane. Yes, he can. When you can just do it. And now Orn is six, still has the TP available. And once the Galio hits six, I believe he should start looking towards bot lane. Because this is, I believe this time around, it is Columbia College that favors the global comp and can five man bot easier. For sure. I mean, there's no globals on the, on the other side. 
I suspect they would not have too much to worry about in that department. When you have the paranoia and the heroic entrance on your side, there's a lot you can do from very, very far away. Whether or not they will be ex able to execute and whether or not Maryville has something prepared to answer it is a different story. Well, it looks like the Cho'Gath needs to get it back off, trying to shove in the wave as much as possible, using a lot of mana. Going to go back, try and match the Catalyst. Stumpy looking, ooh, sets up a freeze for himself. That will be really good, trying to blow the TP out of Cho'Gath. We'll see if uh, Saskio burns TP for this. No, he won't. Um, he knows it would just be a trade, most likely. Yeah. Looking around the map, and again, not much going on. Just second buffs are starting to spawn for both junglers. Not really. There haven't been many invades uh, between early game presence for the junglers this series. It's mainly been just wait, establish the line of vision. Oh, Dean going in. They're Dean using in. everything on this man. Dean with the flash hook lands that one with the ult coming in and flood going wall or bug zack. There you go. Good wall for CKG. Uh, I really like that play. I like the use of wait, uh, proto proto 1v1 up. Oh, here's the galley all coming in. Out. Does he have ultimate? He does not. Level five. Let's go coming in. Winds of war getting the kill. Julian picking up the kill as a taunt onto west. Oh, double kill for finally. Columbia is getting the ball this rolling in the, deep. This is what we were talking about. This good global comp. What a, a fantastic TP coming down from Mr. Stumpy right away using the ultimate to pick up the first blood, which, by the way, went over to the Nocturne, something that did not happen last game. And then Galio being able to use ult in the 1v1 ADC fight, helping out, picking up a double kill for himself. And now, Columbia College, all of a sudden, 1.7k gold lead. This is the and, first early game gold lead they've had. Yeah, they should have fallen back after they just forfeit Cat Ear's life. It was a huge commitment for one kill. Using that paranoia and Dean's flash hook just to rotate everyone in and try and kill him there. That is something you would probably take from the side of Maryville because you burned all of their cooldowns and only lost one. But then the fact that Prototype was getting so aggressive in a 1v1 against Jen when Julian still had that hero's entrance to just follow up, that is just greedy. You don't need to be making these kinds of risky plays in their early game when Nocturne and Galio just hit their level six. Hey, that's the Prototype we know and love. And you now, I guess, can see why he was put on Ash. He can't really go that aggressive as Ash. But with Kai's a very aggressive champ, not even hitting level six yet. So missing out on the ability to ult around and be able to move around, having to burn both songs. We do see Cat Ears coming up. Nice pillar. Uh, Orn will get away. And Bugzax now up here. The ult was popped by Trundle. Uh, also, CKG making roam. Once again, getting a free roam off. But Galio is free to push in mid. Nothing happening in top. Nothing uh, emanating. Mm -hmm. And we have to wonder, what is Maryville going to do to not fall prey to the next iteration of the mm -hmm. ultimate usage from Columbia College? Because Paranoia is almost back up. Here is entrance about two-thirds of the way. And now this time, Evan and Dean have theirs to follow up. And when you have that curtain call to slow everyone, when they're already being uh, just pummeled by the Galio Nocturne, Oh, CKG trying to go in, CKG getting taunt. Blitz is coming. Dean, Dean is coming up from the bot side. Dean looking for the hook. Gets stunned. Beautiful hook. Flash from CKG is burned. Crucial flash right there. And now we have to look at top. Will Sasuke burn teleport to get back to lane? He is looking for a play. Bot will not find anything unless something has to be forced. No, just walking back to top lane now as we see. But sixes are hit by both supports and ADCs. Other than that, it's just a reset off of the Anivia flash. Yeah, and, but burning that flash is kind of not what you weren't. Well, not would you? Excuse me, not where you would want to be on CKG's side because Julian could just do this. Paranoid going, but Egg is still available. Egg getting popped. The oh, pillar, 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 oh, it. They, they don't have the damage. Out. They they can't do it. Dean's coming in though, looking for a hook. Cho got TPing in. There's the TP that Sasuke was looking for, and oh, hits the rupture right there. But Dean pulls in. Julian's and gone. Uh, chomp down or looking for a kill. Uh, no Trundle available to stay alive. Sasuke does not have flash anymore, able to chunk. West is here too. Great knockback and the wall really to pull him in. That's good probably good. kill. That's a second kill. Great play by Sasuke. Great interactions, great canceling. This is what we needed to see. With the teleport advantage, Sasuke is making good use of that. So two kills uh, onto the Orn and the Galio. And now once again, oh, you got one. 
Crow needs I mean, to playing... just, yeah, he's playing back. He knows uh, if he makes another overstep, it could cost his team the lead this time. They'd probably be on even footing if they didn't get over aggressive down there. Maybe even have a lead. But that mid class was beautiful. You're seeing the advantages of the Anivia into this team composition, which has incredible burst damage, but not a lot of DPS to follow up. So when CKG falls into that egg, it's very difficult for Julian to actually have the follow-up damage to kill him. And since Cat Ears was there to force Bugstack out of turret range with that pillar, he had to flash away. Julian can't finish him off. CKG is stalling time for Sasuke to teleport into the mid lane. He hit some great ruptures, and they're just able to chase down two kills. And that's another thing you're talking about, the, the pillar being crucial in the team fight. Using utilization of the terrain by Maryville, the Anivia wall, the Trundle pillar, it's been phenomenal. And seeing this already demonstrated this early in the game, as we saw in game two as well, if you're Columbia College, you have to worry about that. You can't be getting greedy diving in back line. You just know you're gonna get trained out, especially when the wall gets bigger and the pillar comes up faster. What, what are you gonna do when that happens? You have to start playing smart around your positioning and around the terrain given to you. TC is trying to go for efficiency with these Nocturne Ultimates. They're using it off cooldown as much as possible. As soon as he gets level 6, it's time to go on Cat Ears. Call in Dean for the Flash Hook. As soon as it's back up, they're going into the mid lane trying to dive a turret. But it's not going to work every single time if Maryville has something prepared. The egg is down now, his flash is yep. down, and there will be a small window where they can make something happen without the chance of repercussions. But they have to find it in this window, and I don't know if TKG wants to be getting too aggressive here. You're right, and also to note, uh... Misty Stumpy does have teleport back up, so teleport advantage in favor of Columbia College looking to make uh, something that happened as we saw earlier, good use of the teleport alt and the global off of Galio. We have to see if they're doing something. It looks like four are rotating down the bot lane, getting pretty aggressive for this turret. Dean playing really aggressive. Here, here they go, the here's the off cooldown. Galio ult coming in. Oh, the flash hook hits, and that's a dead MU West right there. The TP from Anivia did come in. Here comes and the horn. Yeah, you're looking to taunt. But wait, the ult got, uh, TP got canceled. Uh, Evermore all sitting in the back line. Cat here is sustaining up from his ultimate. Mary's right, winning oh, this. Prototype, prototype swinging it around. Kaiza, here comes the damage that we want. Dean gets stunned up right there. Prototype's going Prototype's in. Winner. Prototype winning no mana though. He has no mana. Flashes out of the taunt. Uh, Dean goes down. Uh, Evan RL does hit the W. But the prototype went in without any map. What Two a for one for Maryville, Maryville regardless. <laughs> and swing. that's another paranoia used where Maryville got the advantage. And it's a dead even game now. You're right. Paranoia right off cooldown. As we mentioned, the unsealed spell, but coming out of CKG, he had teleport. He did have teleport up. He was able to TP down. So despite the Galio ult, Nocturne ult, and the flash hook from Dean, West stalled long enough for everyone to get down. Uh, CKD, CKG did a good job of stopping the Jin ult. He only got two shots off, I believe. Great collapse from Maryville right there. Good job uh, targeting the right people to hit. Very good front line. And now they have the gold lead. It's, even though it's 100, it's still a gold lead. <laughs> Looks more like zero uh, from now what I'm seeing. Oh, light oh, now lead it's for $1. CC. Um, but very, oh, very even game. But this actually benefits the side of Maryville, the fact that it's even, and the fact that three Paranoias have gone through now with only one of them netting them an advantage. The fact that they're holding on, and the fact that Anivia is able to scale up. Anivia is now at the point where she is able to wave clear this mid lane almost mindlessly. She can just put down that little frost storm, and all the minions will be gone. And that makes it very hard for them to actually go on her because. Every time they want to go in, the wave is gone, and then you can't force anything even if you get the kill. Now Nocturne is sitting around this pixel bush down in Bot River. Julian looking for a bait. I think they know the Nocturne's there. Julian looking to go in and get stunned up. But Cat Ears is also there. Good wall, good pillar. This is talking about. Hits one another taunt. Cat Ears going in, pops the ult, stay alive, and that's it. Just disengage. As we said right there, the pillar good the spell terrain. Show. Yeah, good spell show on the Nocturne's part. But you gotta play around the terrain. I think CC did a good job of backing off because Paranoia is up. Don't dive in. Don't risk Oh, it. great wall oh, blocking that from Julian. Is this Wait, a solo there. kill from CKG? No, he doesn't have an E up. Oh, there's the E. There's the He's auto. reading for it. He gets oh, it. CKG gets this guy in the flash out, but will he get escape? Paranoia Does he have the egg? Run. He's uh, still alive. Still alive right now. The egg Here is comes Trundle. Cat Ears has man. flash. Cat Ears does have flash. Ah, uh, no. CKG goes down. Uh, good flash out by Bug Zach. But now okay. Mr. Stummy caught. Uh, does What's this here? This could get bad for Maryville. It is. Oh, Jen ult. Jen ult does. He hits one. He cancels after two. Sasuke will run to Lulu. Yeah. Words. Wow. 
<laughs> this is just why, why okay. say words when you can just make weird noises. noises. But for I guess it's because right now this is opposite of what these past two early games have been. Now it, instead of just like someone gets an advantage early, oh, as West. here West getting picked up. Oh, West, you gotta be better than that. Pops the ult, trying to stay alive as long as possible. But that will be a kill going down on the West. Prototype, oh, prototype going in. Prototype, what are you doing? Why are you holding him? <laughs> oh my God, good lord, man. Uh, but that will be first turret going down for uh, Columbia College. This is more of a mid game, though. We see sped up a lot more kills in the 10 to 20 minute mark, unlike the first two games where it was just early game focused uh, primarily. CKG so, got so over aggressive for the kill. The fact that he took so multiple turret shots trying to kill Julian bought so much time for Missy Stumpy and the bot lane to actually collapse. So he now had to burn his flash again just to try and get out. So this makes him a lot less safe and it gives the opportunity with his death for them to push down the mid lane and get that first blood turret. You're right about that. And also to note, he has switched from teleport over to ghost now. This ghost will be up soon. One adaptation I see prototype making on this Kaiza. He's not going Death's Dance first item. These look like the uh, components to an, an essence reader. Seems like the crit build. Standard ADC build. But we see Julian getting uh, stunned, warded up. Uh, there's the taunt. Hits cat ears. Good pillar. Pillar locks him in. The stopwatch has been used by Julian. But the stun about Where's to come out stun? from CKG. Where is it? Buying oh, time. Bliss is here. Going down. That, I mean, that's what happens when you're down flashes. You have to respect the terrain. Not respecting the terrain if you're flashless will be just the down. Mary Bills played so games. well around it. They, they look like they have. really know what to do with the additions of terrain on the map. They can just use it to block so many abilities. CKG knows this in Ivia in and out. Yep, and now you're looking at it. Response turret. Now it's one to one tied up in the turrets. Down two kills, but now the goalie's only 1,000 instead of 2,000. Picking up the kill as well as the turret. And you see now why the Olaf and the Zack man came through. The, just having this trouble. TP coming in, they want oh. they want Evan. They do want Evan. Who's this here from? CK Evan's dead. Or? Evan is dead. Is this a teleport from... Oh, the Sa Saskio. Because CKG did just switch back to teleport. With They'll have to see if that's worth the TP because they lost a lot of time for Misty Sumpy to hit that top lane turret. And, and there are pings on Rift Hill right now. Coming right, from and Jin got the turret to equalize the gold anyway. They're going to try and push this in the bot lane to equalize that while CKG holds the top. Now, Saskio has no TP, and we are seeing... Uh, they're no, oh, that not banner, though. Still three. Ooh, that banner against an Anivia, rough. But we do see the group of three going down, and once again, Bugs out soloing that Rift Herald. Now, the Rift Herald has not been impressive these past two times. We have to see if Columbia College can adapt to that and do better this time around. Especially with three already being down in the bot lane. Your best bet right now, since two of the three tier ones are taken, I guess try and make a play and go for inner, or just use it inner for free damage. Because that top lane turret is about to go down for variable. Yep, but for the time being, it is about back to even. It will be interesting to see if they decide to use the Rift Herald top to just finish off that turret, or if they want to try and do something to maybe chip down that mid lane inner turret, because the more turrets you can get down mid lane against an Anivia, that's a hard thing to do given her wave clear. If you can combine the Rift Herald with some sort of banner minion combination and force Anivia out of lane with some uh, good aggressive plays from Jin and Nocturne combined to just scare her off, that could do a lot in terms of your map control. With the inner being down, you would be able to push so far into the jungle. Another interesting thing is that the dragon is still alive. We're seeing that when Maryville has the tempo advantage, and as it was in game one and two, they were able to take four dragons. Even though they were cloud, they prioritized taking them. But now that Columbia has had the advantage in this early game in terms of pressure, they haven't really opted to bother with this cloud. Uh, you're right. And another thing, uh... Just looking around, uh, the three kills on Nocturne is something that could have been well needed in game two, because we now see Finished Warrior, Finished Duskblade, he's ahead. He's ahead by uh, 600 gold curling against his jungle counterpart. And when this Nocturne dives in, there's no Tom Kench to eat whoever gets paranoid. That's the thing. So burst could happen. You go in on Prototype, he's popped. You go in on the West, he's popped. Now, there's a chance of a Polymorph or uh ultimate from lulu happening on whoever gets paranoid but you have to be concerned about how these team fights are going to go because you still have the nocturne galio combination you still have the blitzcrank galio combination you have ornolt coming in what is the plan of strategy for maryville besides playing around terrain play front to back 
You keep your tanks in the front and you'll be okay. Flash up? Oh, what a flash from CKG. Very, very good flash from CKG to keep that one alive. If he fell there, that was the wave clear gone and they could have been a mid lane inner or even a Baron yeah. attempt from the side of Columbia. But go, going back to the front to back, he, uh, keep elaborating on that one. Well, if you have your tanks in the front line, it's going to be very hard for your back line to actually be hooked. And mm -hmm. if Bucksack decides to dive in all the way on your back line with that paranoia, with the dive buddy and Julian, you at least have the Lulu to back you up. And from there, if CKG finds some breathing room, or if they jump on Prototype instead, they can use that terrain to then help Prototype kite out the fight. Well, there you go. Uh, now looking at the items, almost a fully stacked Rod of Ages from the Anivia, but a Seraphs is fully finished. You have the ability for the shield. There is no Seraphs this time on the Galio. So it's just a Zanya's and a fully stacked Rod of Ages. When that Rod gets fully stacked, you're also looking to see a Leandry's coming in most likely or a Void Staff. Something to just pump out as much damage as possible because of CKG and his Anivia, that large field of a slow and consistent DPS, he's already level 14. So the wall's getting bigger now. You can force people wherever you want them to go. So CC do get this top lane turret without having to burn the Rift so they'll still have that available. However, the time oh, taking the play top. off to use it in the top lane anyway, it looks like was potentially just running out on that, but Anivia will be just fine to answer that. Yeah, the Anivia is going to handle it just fine. It can be able to wall off and as well as just the consistent DPS with uh, Anivia passive going with her E, easy. And the Cho'Gath looking to come up and eat this. I do believe he gets an extra stack of feasts. It's not counted as a minion. I think it's one of the epics, I believe. If I'm not sure about that, epic, actually. You might be right. Popped, I think after it's popped. I know before it's popped, it counts as an epic. It does right. not count towards the six minutes after it's popped. I actually, I don't know that interaction. But I would. It looks like he did use the feast, so I would, I would assume you're correct. Uh, or it's just, it's a lot of true damage. I mean, come on, who can deny all that true damage, especially on uh, the Rift Herald with so much health. Uh, these cannon or banner minions not doing much. Interesting they're keeping Prototype down here to kind of just freeze the bottom wave. He's getting a lot of farm, but he's still behind Evan, and he's not able to contribute nearly as much to the scene. Oh, there's an Ornol being popped. Who's the old? Oh, wait, is he um, no, they're, they're trying to force things while they know Prototype can't be in the fight. They are, but Prototype's on the way. Again, the W is very long. can engage off the W. Any one marked Plasma, uh, Prototype can ult onto. And that'll be key to see which uh, path he goes on. Especially with... Uh, is that, that looks like maybe, oh, it's a zeal and a, a pickaxe. So could be an infinity edge, could be a rapid fire, uh, Runon's hurricane to distribute a lot more of that plasma. We'll have to see uh, how he positions in team fight specifically. Very well needs to kind of answer their ways a little bit faster because they just had the top and bot one pushing into them. You'd like to have the Anivia be able to clear out mid to always have priority there. And you wouldn't like to have Prototype continue to be bought without Teleport. On the other hand, Columbia needs to finally get around to be doing this Dragon because you're not going to have any Dragons in this game if you don't at least get the first one to cycle them in. Yep. Well, it looks like uh, Air Dragon will be getting picked up a Cloud Dragon. And there are three other Columbia College guarding the Baron. So good job on that control. But uh, going back to your wave clear, I think the Anivia is okay in the side lane, especially running double TP. It's more, I guess, favorable to put him in mid, but Prototype's doing a good job, especially with the evolved Kai'Sa Q. That's ridiculous. You get 12 missiles to clear the wave, and with that, the, the crit build, it's a lot easier to clear wave than if you're going the Death Stance, uh, Smasher's Tooth build with Ginsu's. Right. This is actually the first game of, um, or first series where I've gotten the chance to cast Kai'Sa, so pretty interesting seeing her attack patterns compared to other AD carries. I definitely see why I like it getting Ash in and doing a lot of damage. He's even gotten 1v4 this game. Didn't actually die that time, oddly enough, but <laughs> that <laughs> I was keeping was, it up. I think because he was in between his own two. But that yeah. all was definitely interesting. <laughs> was not expecting that, especially with, uh, once again, low mana cost. Now oh, Ornall looking at Karen Noy coming in. Going in, down on the loop. Oh, 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 takes oh, so much what? damage. What a beautiful play though by Bugsack right there, but can he follow up? No, Galio will oh, coming in. Caddiers Dean with the hook, Caddiers doing his best, no gets on it up, dies to Evan RL. Uh, anything to happen? No, Julian with the Zanyas, good wall, good uh, Orin cube, I believe, little pillar. CKG's kiting this. Job. He is doing a good job. He's got to stop Dean though, good wall. There's no flash, oh, the flash is back available. Uh, gotta look for the Orn. Now the wall is down. Julian looks to look for a taunt. Miss W by the Kaiser. Oh, I don't think you want to pull the Chogath. I don't think that's what you want to pull in. 
No flash taunt. Oh, the flash has already been used. Good wall on CKG's part. Misses the stun though. Looks for the ult. E getting a good chunk of damage down like that. I don't that. know if he wants this. No, Dean's coming over, but he does have flash. Just know that. Oh, flash. <laughs> oh good flash interaction. With the Just like there. last time. It's There's on the that cycle. Once CKG's again, cutting so well. Huge. The wall is massive. Oh, oh he's gone too far. that coming down. Ooh. Does have the egg. No but... team. Yeah no, yeah, no team right there. R.I.P. Just again over aggressive from CKG. He he makes the moves, he makes the plays happen, and then he gets far, and then he costs his team. I because think because that's no, a lot of variant control without the wave clear from the Anivia. But before CKG and while they're doing this Baron, I do want to mention Bugzak, very smart in what he did. Ults the Lulu. They're so starting the Baron. West, yeah, West had to ult himself. Also, Lulu immediately turns and goes on a fight. Oh, there's a hook on a two no guy. Whoa, 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 he likes it better than Vayne, and we all know Prototype's Vayne is god tier, man. What a play. What a turnaround for Maryville. This is what they needed. Columbia College once again slipping up, similar to what happened in game two. And now Baron onto four people for Maryville University. What a fight. What a clutch moment for this Maryville team. And just like that, with the Baron buff in the 3,000 gold lead, if Maryville can start to close this one out, the team built to win the North Columbia College might just fall in a 3-0 fashion to Maryville, who have been playing great. Uh, as we talked about last game, too, standing gold. And now look, you look at CGKG going to top lane, getting that turret taken care of. Add on to the gold lead. Keep the side pressure up. You still have, uh, well, one TP, I guess. He switched back to Ghost. But what about Saskio? Saskio in that fight, absolutely blowing up Columbia College. And then Dean, the West coming just gone. Exactly, and then West coming from the back line, Lulu does a lot of damage for his support. The base DPS for Lulu is pretty broken. He didn't have to. Bucksack was so low because they tried to start the Baron, and he had to end up tanking it because Misty Stumpy was not uh, immediately in the position he needed to be. So all those factors together, coupled with the fact that Frodo was able to find his way onto the back line, Evan can't kite out effectively when he loses his support and some part of his tank line. Julian wasn't able to do anything on the Galio, and they just get wiped, and that's Baron. And now you're seeing once all the flashes are blown and once all the abilities and ultimates are blown, this Columbia College team is very ult reliant. Reliant on the paranoia, reliant on the Orn ult, reliant on the Galio ult. Once those ults go away, it's all variable because their terrain's only on six second, 10 second cooldown. Something They're like looking that. for something. You can see the Orn ult right here, paranoia going in, Jin ult up. Proto's caught. Team with the hook, Proto gets caught. And Proto is dead. What a. Honestly, they need to leave. Yeah, they need to leave right now, trying to disengage. Galio Wolf is down. Looking for the silence onto Misty Stumpy. Dean coming up. West has to be the sacrificial lamb right here, ulting himself. You know what? If you're Maryville, back away right now. But honestly, That was exactly what CC needed. When you get the Baron, the only way that you can fall in these siege situations is if you get caught out, if you get picked, if the other team team fights you and forces you to fall back and lose those Baron buffs, and it stalls out the game quite significantly for Columbia, and that was completely necessary to come back in this game. We have been praising Cat Ears and CKG's use of terrain all game, but in that moment, the pillar blocked all prototype from being able to path around and try his best to get to safety, even though I think he was dead no matter what. But now we have good wave clear coming back. The Anivia is back alive. That stops any hope of CC taking down turrets. It's just go back, reset the waves, go pick up this dragon right here. You look at top wave right now for Columbia College. It's pushing pretty hard in the tier two. Will be picked up by the Anivia though. Looking for a bait. I don't know if this is right. I think just rush The it. thing is, when you have Baron buff, you do not want to be the one answering waves pushing into you. You want to be the one setting up a siege and finding the opportunity to force the other team into a pickle where they either just lose all their turrets or they take a disadvantageous fight. Well, according to the land, it's a 4v3 right now, but we have two in the flank for Columbia College down that river bush. Both of them are backing, however, looking to reset. So five-man man responding to the Baron buff. The Baron won't be active for longer on these champions, and it's only on three, I believe. Once again, another Cloud Drake spawning, though, so what do you do? Uh, the fourth Cloud, fifth Cloud Drake, actually, in this series. 
But here we go once again, running it back, same situation. Baron just wore off, but the cannon minion are, is Baron uh, bannered up. Waiting out the Baron was absolutely huge, and they're going to go again. Exact, this is... exact same thing. Ornal into Paranoia. Good wall. Great wall. Great wall right here. Prototype does not choose to dive in this time. Smart prototype. And, and you see CKG is at level 17, so that wall is almost maxed out now. It's so wide that it can just block off almost the entire lane. It's massive. You dominate and you control where the enemy walks with that wall. They have to walk into the ult. They have to stay there. With Trundle Pillar, you can block off an entire lane, which is ridiculous. Now, Columbia College, they know they're on Dragon, so they're just trying to push out any waves, trying to reset the fights. There's a fat bot way for Prototype to pick up right now. And honestly, you're not sad if you're farming, especially on this Kaiza. Catching back up in CS with Evan RL, your three items, all you do is scale up, scale up, scale up. This will be very crucial for Prototype, and now we have to see how these team fights continue going. Trundle building is more support oriented. Uh, style has the Knight's Vow, has the Zeke's Convergence. Cho'Gath is getting tanky. Now is when he starts to build armor. So goodbye, Evan RL damage. Goodbye, Buckzack damage. This will be crucial once a stone plate comes into play. Possibly uh, maybe a Thorn Mail for the final item or a Frozen Heart. A lot of armor right there. We have to wait and see on that. I'm going to be looking for when CKG hits these big ticket items such as a Void Staff or Death Cap. It looks like he's only going to have room for one because he might upgrade that stopwatch into Zanyas. And for the time being, he needs to have these pink boards. Look how many pink boards that Maryville has in their inventory. Two, three, six. Uh, and they just nine, placed ten. one. There were ten. Yeah. Before that one got placed. Ten. Their vision control is immaculate. It has been this entire series. One thing that has been very consistent with Maryville throughout. Uh, now, if it's just kind of stall out until Baron. You have a minute and a half. Baron dance can ensue. Excellent vision by Maryville. You are college right now around Baron. You look at all the pink wards, you look at the deep wards into Maryville's blue side jungle. Columbia College is now on the proactive for vision. Just gonna steal the blue away for CKG. He's got two levels on Julian. It feels like he's been level 17 for a while now, so. Maybe just so guys. far ahead in the farm department. Everyone at Maryville is actually ahead when you look at the carries. CKG and Prototype both level up. Every, all the tanks and support characters oh, are even. looking at the carry. Sasio dealing fat damage with his ult. I mean, he's almost at rank 3 ult. And with his health, if that is a stone plate being built, everyone knows the stone plate Cho'Gath ult. And if you're an ADC like myself, you've been one shot by that plenty of times. Especially right. back when it was broken. We'll be waiting to see what that uh, call farm builds into, though. Uh, there is an active stopwatch for CKG, as well as his passive is back up. Um, it's going to be hard to kill Anivia. Um, it will be prototype in, in an actual 5v5. You can definitely pick CKG off and burn through both the stopwatch and the egg if you don't have to worry about the rest of his team. But the fact that you're going to have this wild growth from the Lulu and all the support from the tank line and prototype DPSing the entire time while you're trying to kill the Anivia, it's going to buy so much time. And when you're looking at the CC lineup, they don't have that great of DPS. MNRL has to spend such a long time reloading every single time he empties his clip, and there's no DPS on the rest of the team. You're right about that. Uh, one thing we did just see, Sasuke pushing uh, the bot wave. Stumpy's going to go try and take care of that. Get it back pushing in favor of Columbia College. We have five in the mid lane right now. W. Sasuke is so huge right now. Good lord. I bet that finally hit level 16. His ultimate massive. Uh, and also, Maryville can go catch the top wave right now to make sure it does not push. Looks like no one's going to go pick that up right now. They're all going to keep the Baron Dance up. Sasuke, or Stumpy did not respond to that bot wave. Kurt's up getting some damage in onto uh, there. And now it's more of the Baron Dance. Holding on to that pull, I really like this from Dean. Being able to hold on to the pull and still a lot of pressure into Mary. That's what, Blitz what good Blitzcranks do. That is well, what separates the good Blitzcranks from the great Blitzcranks, as Riot would say, is the ability to use pressure even when uh, you don't actually have to use your cooldowns to create that pressure. And Dean is experienced on the champion. He's hit some good hooks this game, some not so much, such as killing himself when he pulls in his ass <laughs> uh It's really going to be these hooks that make or break this mid to late game for Columbia College because they don't really have a great way to front to back team fight as we've been talking about. The DPS just isn't there, but they have burst. And if Dean separates a target, 
especially a squishy one such as the uh, Endivia, Kaisa, or Lulu, then you're definitely going to be able to burst them down. However, if he doesn't hit a hook, then eventually Maryville will just be able to run away with these team picks. You're right about that. And more Baron Dance ensuing right now. Columbia College is doing really vision, but priority in mid lane. Oh, Lulu. there's a hook on West. West dead. West has Olden Stop. No, he's dead. Proto's uh, dead. Going down prototype in the back. Proto is dead. Now it's all about the Anivia. But oh, Watch the Anivia. I, I didn't see the Bug Sack die. He disappeared. Julian's dead now. This is a turn off. Anivia oh, damage. Oh, ridiculous. And now Anivia old and the E going in. Evan RL has to die right here from Leandre. Saskio. Dean gonna die as well. Orn, you have to suspect going to die. What a wall right there. It's massive. It takes up the entire lane by itself. And just Where's continue the... to put on damage. Dean is still alive. Saskio right. having the ability to turn a fight around with just one press of a button is ridiculous. Saskio and CKG are, have been so reliable this series for Maryville. That DPS in the team fight, Anivia just zoning an entire entrance into the mid lane there, and they're actually trying to two man this Baron. I don't know if this is going to work. I, I don't know if it's going to work. They don't have any sweepers available, no pink work. But it's just the Orn. No, it's going down too slow for this. They know if they have to back off. Yeah, Nocturne's up and Trundle's still dead. This is asking for a steal. Or just but death. now, if here's the thing. If they back, there's priority on uh, Columbia College for taking this Baron. Uh, there's no TP on CKG. There's a TP on Saskio. And their waves are pushing in. Their waves are pushing in. Dragon is going to be available. We have to go see. That is Elder Drake. So not that important right now. It's only one to one in terms of Dragon. <laughs> and it's but, Cloud. Yeah, no, I mean, you're gonna go twice as fast. That's pretty cool, I guess. Prototype clearing the wave top. Uh, sending the Trigat so lot. Smart they're actually starting it. Starting the they have the blue trinket. Is the teleport gonna come out from Trigat? You have to bait that one out. It's you going down very in. slow. They have no it DPS. Is. No, no DPS at all. Uh, missed hook. Ornol coming in. Ornol hitting west. They're fine. There's, there's no blitz hook. Paranoia coming in for what reason? I don't they know. They get the TP and that's it. They do. Uh, it, is it a win? I do believe it's a win in the eyes of. It is. It is a win because you now have double teleport advantage over Saskio. But have they been doing anything this entire series with the split push? Yes, you have to no. think back to Misty Snuffy's Camille, but he's on an Orin this time. They're not going to be able to make much at all happen off that teleport advantage. And now with the Ornold and the Paranoia down for now, uh, Ornold's almost halfway back, but Buckstack does not have his ult for another seventy-five percent of the time. It's only twenty-five percent. Uh, refreshed. Here comes the trend. There's hook going wide again. They need this redemption, though. You gotta have it. Yeah, the redemption will reset the fight. Sasuke and just sit in front. His champion model is just massive. You're They're doing running no to damage. Elder. Marigold no wins fights very hard where they don't get picked. So they need to try and force objectives and then turn. Elder but for is this CC Elder don't want to fight because they know they don't really have the advantage in these types of five-on-five -five situations. So they're opting for a trade if possible. And I honestly think the Baron is the better take here. The Baron is better take, but three members of uh, Mary It goes very slow, and they, CKG is coming. It does go very slow. Prototype and West are still at Elder. They're off Baron. They, they got they Elder. They did get they Elder. Right now the true damage comes. All I have to do is back out. Hook is missed. Run down Hook mid. missed right here. Oh, if you run it down mid right here, wait. Yeah, look at that. The mid wave pushing extremely hard. This could be a chance, a huge chance for Mary Honestly, if there's yeah, a fight CC right backs, here, they can just do Baron too. You take inhibitor right here, or just the uh, inhibitor turret, go straight to Baron. I believe you get the inhibitor. Ah, no, Baron no wants to fight. They're, the ultimate for Orin is down. The paranoia is down. It's coming up very soon. Up. But they do get the inhibitor. And now, do you just rush straight to Baron with Orin still down? You have Elder Buff on you. This is the time to take a fight. But we do have to see Galio ult is up. Jin ult is up. Uh, they have a lot of gold on them. Up. All of their members have above 1,500 this is true. Uh, okay, no, they're backing off. Be set. Elder Dragon will run off, I believe, in a couple minutes. But that was, or maybe a minute less than that. But really good job disengaging that fight. They did see the back of someone, though. So now it's going back to the Baron buff. As we've been mentioning, they can't, not a they high can't do this. Baron. They can't. They don't have the damage. Sasuke is massive right now. This man is ridiculous. Uh, there's. Tier two turret. How do they kill the this bottom? Cho'Gat? You can't. You can't. Honestly, he has Randowins coming up too. Your only hope is for the Jin. But he with Randowins coming, you can't do it. I don't think this... the lethality will be good enough. Alright. So mid inhibitor has now been taken. This is the slow advantage that Maryville is trying to use to choke out uh Columbia. All three of these games have been long. Very methodical gameplay. Maryville's really opting into these um 
low risk, low reward plays that over time will net them the victory. They aren't like really it. leaving that much room for Columbia to come back in. It's usually been CKG over aggressing or prototype getting caught out, but those have been few and far between. And now they're looking to oh, force Wes the just hit the Baron. They're gonna force the Baron wall. Elder Look at the so DPS long. compared Lord to when CC does it. Oh yeah. This yeah. is gone. Nocturne's like gone. Prototype DPS, unless uh, Galio Q. Nope, nothing. Good smite on the side of Cat Ears. No TP even coming in from uh, Misty Stumpy down in bot. And now, your easiest objective right now is a tier two. There's tier two in top, tier two in bot. What are you gonna do? Push down top right now. Uh, it seems like Stumpy is not even responding with the teleport yet. Still trying to push out. And this is a free tier two turret right now. Stumpy's not even looking to back. Nocturne just got back, has paranoia up, all ultimates are up. Stumpy gotta do What's... something. If they forfeit two inhibitors You're and the is still up, how are they going to come back in this game? You're not on Camille. There, there is a deep ward. There's a ward. Here's the teleport. Oh, no, 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 here's no, the it's back, back, but it's, it's, it's not gonna be time. Oh, he's not even back. He canceled it. What is he? They he have to run. do something. Oh, here comes the teleport. Why, why would you teleport to the tower, though? It's dead. The church, that's a waste of a teleport. CC's now it's a 45 tilted. for good. It's a 45. You can't do this. Stumpy is a good enough player to know. Oh man, and that's a free inhibitor. Why would you teleport? You had minion wave there as well. And they're still Baron buff, freshly taken for Maryville. They have about two thirds of the duration left. They can walk in that bot wave. Two inhibitors already down. The mid one's coming up shortly here, but you can at least go back and cycle that because you are so confident in your team fight ability right now. You have an 8,000 gold lead. Yes, it's late game, but you are just in a, such a great position to close out the series 3-0. I I'm not understanding the macro plays that are happening. We praise them for macro. I've praised them for the entire season. It's what they've been a found, like, strong foundation for them. But now it just seems like everything's crumbling. This type of guerrilla warfare style that uh, Maryville's posing, but in the end is just kind of like a fake out to just being very normal standard team comp. Wow, this is just also on the good. edge here. This is we're on the edge of the. End of this series potentially if Maryville are able to close this one out. Anivia picked up the void staff and the rabbit and the death cap and the death cap. <laughs> she it is was so big. That's how much confidence. And all you have to do, you just play back on it. That's the beauty. You have a Cho'Gath right in front. Look at the character model. If that gets hooked or if the Trundle gets hooked, you're not going to burst that down. You can't. Trundle just ults the Orn. And now he has three stats, and he's extremely tanky. They're protecting you know, the banner minion, too. Jin cannot hit it. Smart. No one else can DPS it. They hook it in, and they're kill well, it. That was, a, that was a good hook in. Yeah, that's uh, smart. Good right there. Prototype needs to play a little bit more back. But even so, the turret is almost gone. It's gone. Wow. Exposed inhibitor now. Look at that damage from Prototype. Prototype going in. Oh, my God. Prototype with a voice that again. And this is the last dish effort. Oh, 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 here goes the orange. If he they misses it. Fly, this is game. He missed the ult. The Trundle Pillar. What a Trundle Pillar to stop that. This is it. This is the game. If they win this fight, they can keep pushing. Orn's looking to die. There's a wall right there from Anivia. He has a flash out. Looking over there at Sasuke. Sasuke is his ult. Chomps down. Doesn't do a lot of damage. But look at this push. Super mean. They got CKG. Everywhere. Baron buff. CKG. But he is an egg. Lord being helped to them. No. Protect in the back line. Shooting down Dean. So many minions. Kill there. Uh, dead. CKG. Protect going. Taunt it up. Uh, kills Julian. They've oh, done it! That's it! That's 3-0! That's the 3-0! There's no server scripts at all! Somebody's dead! Maryville is your North Region Collegiate League of Legends champions in an unexpected fashion! 3-0 against the undefeated Columbia College, the gods of the North, Drake Porter and company! Wow! That was 